Welcome to a demonstration of using ZOS Connect Enterprise Edition to create REST APIs from a COBOL batch application. This demo is divided into three parts. Part 1, which you're viewing now, will introduce the sample application scenario and review the COBOL batch application from which we'll create our REST APIs. Parts 2 and 3 are shown in other videos and will demonstrate the processes used to create, deploy, test, and dynamically update our RESTful APIs using the Eclipse-based IBM ZOS Connect EE API Editor. For this exercise, I'm going to use the IBM Explorer for ZOS Eclipse environment with the IBM ZOS Connect EE API Editor feature installed to develop and deploy REST APIs to a running ZOS Connect EE server, which uses the WebSphere Optimized Local Adapter, or WOLA, service provider to connect to a local COBOL batch application which utilizes the WOLA APIs to communicate with ZOS Connect. Once deployed, these APIs and subsequent back-end COBOL batch application functions can be invoked by API consumers using RESTful interfaces. This demo is based on the ZOS Connect sample WOLA batch application available on GitHub. If we look at its GitHub project page, we see that the Git repository contains sample COBOL source code, JCL, server configuration files, and API deployment instructions to replicate the demo scenario I'll show here. This demo assumes that the ZOS Connect Enterprise Edition has been installed and configured with the WebSphere Optimized Local Adapter Service Provider, and that we have an Enterprise COBOL compiler available. The first thing I'll do is clone the Git repository to my local system, which I do by running the git clone command as shown in the readme. After that, I allocate the necessary datasets on ZOS and upload the sample application files to my ZOS system. We'll begin by looking at the COBOL batch application which we want to REST enable. I'm going to use the IBM Explorer for ZOS as my user interface, but you could just as easily use a 3270 emulator. Let's start with a clean Eclipse workspace running in IBM Explorer for ZOS. The first thing we'll do is create a new connection to my ZOS system. After connecting to my system, I can look at the files I uploaded from my local Git repository by expanding MVS files, my datasets, and then scrolling to the PDS into which I copied those sample files. The first thing we'll do is open the COBOL batch source code we're going to REST enable. As you can see from the sample program description, this application makes use of the WebSphere Optimized Local Adapter APIs to interact with ZOS Connect. It uses the WOLA APIs to register with the ZOS Connect server as a target for the WOLA calls and to receive requests from and send responses to the server. What I want to focus on is the Action Supported section. You can see that this single application supports all four types of HTTP methods which we want our REST API to support. It does this through a service request type variable in the request data structure defined in the ZCon Rec COBOL copybook. If we open up the ZConRec PDS member, which contains the copybook data structure for our request, we can see that the service request type variable, which controls the type of action to take, is defined as a one character field. If we then go back to the ZCon COBOL source code and scroll to our evaluate HTTP verb statement, we can see where we set the value of service request type to the HTTP verb field and then use that to determine which action to take based on its value. When HTTP verb is set to P, we execute the code path that represents a create operation, which is typically how an HTTP POST method invocation is used in a RESTful application. If HTTP verb is set to G, then we execute the code path that represents a read operation, which again is typical for a REST invocation using an HTTP GET method. If HTTP verb is set to U, we'll do an update, and a value of D maps to a delete operation. If anything other than a P, G, U, or D is set for the service request type field, the COBOL application will break out of the WOLA API loop and terminate. In a later video, we'll see how we can use the ZOS Connect EE API editor to assign values to service request type in our APIs to control which COBOL code path is taken for each specific HTTP method used to invoke the API. But first, let's look at the response copybook of our application, which is in the ZCon REST PDS member. Here we can see the kinds of data we keep about our employees, employee ID, name, email address, etc. 
Again, we'll have the opportunity to customize the data sent back to the REST client when we define our API using the API editor later on. So as we've seen, our COBOL batch application expects request data in the form of the ZCon REC COBOL copybook, and we'll send responses matching the data structures defined in the ZCon REST copybook. But the REST clients of our ZOS Connect APIs will expect to use a JSON data format for their request and response payloads. To bridge that gap, we can use the data transformation capability provided with ZOS Connect, which will convert the JSON payload data from our REST client request into the COBOL copybook data structures our COBOL application requires. Then on the response, ZOS Connect will convert the COBOL copybook data into a JSON message format that the REST clients know how to handle. We enable this capability using the BAQ LS2JS utility, which comes with ZOS Connect, which uses the COBOL request and response copybooks to create a pair of JSON schema files for the request and response, a bind file to map the JSON and backend data structures, and a service archive file, which we'll use later on to create our APIs in part two of the demo. After that, we update our ZOS Connect server configuration XML file to know how to handle this transformation. So let's switch back to the ZOS Explorer now and see how this is done. If we look at the sample BAQ ls to js JCL provided in the GitHub repository and uploaded to our system, we can see it's executing a Unix System Services script utility, which you can control with a set of parameters as shown here. As we just saw, the output of this job is a set of files, including JSON schema files for the requests and responses, a bind file to map the JSON data to the backend COBOL copybook structures, and a service archive file which we'll download to our workstation and use later on to create our APIs using the Eclipse API Editor tool. Next we'll update our ZOS Connect server configuration XML files where our server can perform these transformations at runtime. The server XML configuration is stored in a Unix System Services file system on our ZOS system, which I can navigate to and view using the ZOS Explorer. If we open the server XML configuration file from our ZOS Connect server, which is based on the sample provided in the ZOS Connect sample WOLA batch GitHub repository, we can see where I've defined my data transformation for my COBOL batch service. This is where I specify the locations and suffixes for my bind file, and JSON schema files, which we just created using the BAQ LS2JS utility. While we're here, let's look at some of the other ZOS Connect server configuration elements. We can see we're using a basic registry with a single user defined, which we'll need later on when we connect to our server from the Eclipse API editor feature. We can also see where I've defined my COBOL service and specified the data transformation we want to have executed when the service is called. We can see where I've defined my local adapter service provider, and the three-part WOLA name we use to communicate with our COBOL batch application. And finally, I can see what ports my ZOS Connect server is listening on for REST client requests. I've already started this server in the COBOL batch application running our service, which we can see by switching to the JES active jobs list. BAQ STRT is my running ZOS Connect server. And BKCOB is my running COBOL batch job, which we can see has registered using the three-part WOLA name and register name we specified in our server XML. So the runtime is there. There's a running ZOS Connect server with a WOLA connection to our running COBOL batch application, which we've defined as a ZOS Connect service. In later demos, we'll look at the processes used to create, deploy, and test APIs using these ZOS components.